Hi, my name is Matthew Belisario. Welcome to another edition of the Belisario Sonic YouTube channel. Today I'm going to talk about jazz. I'm going to talk about some of the new uh, purchases that I've made here recently. I'm going to talk about a couple of documentaries that I purchased that are jazz documentaries. And I'm also going to talk about the CD format and where I am with buying CDs today. Because a lot of people ask me, well, do you still buy CDs? Or are you only buying records or... Uh, do you like the sound quality of CDs still for, you know, for listening to at home or so I'm going to talk a little bit about that. First of all, I want to talk about some resonance records releases. So if you haven't heard of resonance records um, and you like jazz, you're missing out if you haven't heard of them because they're putting out some really cool stuff. Uh, primarily resonance records puts out lost recordings, either studio recordings or lost live recordings. This particular one I'm holding in my hand is Charles Lloyd, Manhattan Stories. Um, recorded in 1965, two live shows, two records set, 3,500 of these made, hand numbered. Uh, pretty much the vinyl releases of Residence Records are Record Store Day releases only. And I kind of have an issue with that, with the Record Store Day releases, because if you don't get them very quickly, they're gone and they all, they all double in price, triple in price. Now, with lesser known artists such as Charles Lloyd, uh, you can find them a little bit longer. Um, but for somebody like Bill Evans, when a Resonance Records comes out, most of the time you don't have very long to get them and they're double or triple in price within weeks. And so I kind of have an issue with that. And uh, it becomes an issue of collectability versus an issue of actually being able to sit down and listen to some great music, which Resonance Records went through a lot of trouble to come up with these releases. And it's kind of a shame that they're only making so many of them, uh, in a sense. But here's 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 my where I'm going to start talking about CDs. If if you don't get the the vinyl release and you can't afford to pay the 150 bucks or 200 bucks to get the Bill Evans live in England, which I've been wanting to get and I just I can't afford it, uh, then the only choice you have left is to, of course, you can stream it in your car if you have like Amazon Prime uh, Music, which I have, so I can stream that in my car. But I want to be able to listen to it at home on my nice system. And so the issue I have is the only format I can buy it in is CD. And that really sucks because, it's, let's face it, CD's outdated. The 16-bit format is long been needed to be replaced a long time ago. So uh, if anybody from Residence Records is watching or anybody knows anyone at Residence Records, how about giving us a Blu-ray audio and charging us the extra five bucks that it costs to print the, the, the Blu-ray? Because if I buy, I'm not buying CDs very often anymore. They have to be something really rare or something that maybe comes in a nice package with a with a Blu-ray uh, or a DVD concert or, or a documentary. It has to come with something extra than the CD in order for me to buy it anymore. So, I, I mean, I have probably 4,000 CDs, but to me, the format is just, it's finished. So, you know, if it, the portability is not a factor anymore because of streaming. And uh, if you're going to put out a, a hard copy that's digital, why not make it high quality? So hint, hint, let's get some Blu-ray audio uh, stuff. That way if I can go buy my Bill Evans live in England. I'll be glad to give you the, the 25 or 30 bucks for the, the CD or I mean for the Blu-ray set so I can have high quality since I can't uh, pick up the record anymore. Um, so that's my little diatribe on CDs there. This particular record, nice quality, uh, two records, Two different uh, shows, live at Judson Hall, New York City, September 3rd, 1965. And then you've got live at Slug Saloon, New York City, 1965. This is some great stuff, man. If you like progressive jazz, uh, Charles Lloyd on saxophone and flute. Uh, Gabor uh, Zabo, I guess is how you pronounce his name, on guitar. Great guitar player. Ron Carter, of course, one of the greatest bass players ever. One of the most recorded jazz uh, bass players, probably the most recorded uh, jazz bass player ever, and Pete LaRocca Sims on drums. This is a fantastic sounding uh, live, two live shows here. So uh, I really recommend it. Nice gatefold cover. Um, you get a little booklet in there, fold out. It's it's actually just a, a, a one page fold out that gives you the story of, of the, the music. I guess it's actually four pages if you want to count all four sides. Um, and then you get the records, which are really nice quality records with a nice anti-static sleeve. 
So uh, hats off to Resonance Records for another nice uh, release. And uh, you can also go on YouTube and they have these little mini documentaries on the uh, each release. So you can actually watch those and they talk about the background behind uh, the release, you know, where they got the recording from and, and why they wanted to release it. So that's a really uh, nice record. The other one I picked up from Resonance was this Sonny Rollins in Holland. Uh, I think there's 6,000 of these made. This one's also hand numbered. So you see the hand numbering down here. Um, this is a, a nice release. Three records here. And the sound quality is varied. So if you're really picky on your sound quality for like your live shows, uh, you, you, th this may be one you might be disappointed with on the, on the last recording here because the sound quality uh, for that particular live recording is not the best. However, the recording uh, from the Vara studio in the Netherlands on side A, these first four songs on side A, are absolutely phenomenal just will blow you away um these guys were on fire great sounding uh recording there and on the b side you got the go go club in the netherlands uh and that, that's these two tracks here also pretty good sound quality for for a live recording this one here is a studio recording this these two here is a live recording and then your second two uh records are another live recording from the arnhem or in Arnhem, I guess, um, the Academy, I, don't, I, can't, I can't pronounce uh, this uh, this language here, but uh, it's recorded here at a different venue uh, in the Netherlands, and this is where the sound quality falls off a little bit. But the performance more than makes up for it. If you really want to hear, if you're really into hot jazz musicianship and you want to hear this trio on fire, it's this is really amazing release. So hats off to Resonance again for this release. And again, if you can put this on the Blu-ray audio, I would I think a lot of people would really appreciate it. This is also um, the nice thing about this as well is it is a has it's a trifold. So folds out here. And then but this has a 20 page booklet. So they did a really nice job with this booklet here. And it has different interviews in there from the musicians, the whole story of the project. Sonny Rollins, I think, was directly involved in putting this together and um, has a lot of fond memories, I guess, playing with these guys in the Netherlands. Uh, this is 1967. Um, so you get a lot of really cool pictures in this. So I, this is a really nice package. Uh, again, for those who are really sticklers on sound quality uh, for the live show, the set, the last live show. Uh, you might be a little disappointed, but again, for me, I've already listened to this twice through, um, and I've listened to the these first four songs like four times through already because it's just phenomenal. Um, great package here. I can't recommend it enough. If you're into that progressive jazz, you like Sonny Rollins. Um, another great, this is a brand new release or, or Pretty new, um, 2021 this year, Emmett Cohen. If you don't know who Emmett Cohen is and you're into jazz or missing out, go on to YouTube and type in his name, Emmett Cohen, and you'll see uh, Live at Emmett's Place. And the guy just is phenomenal, plays with phenomenal musicians. Um, I ordered this stuff directly off of his website, and uh, I'm blown away. This is a great uh, sounding album. This guy can... Uh, can just play the piano like nobody's business. And what's really cool is he writes his own songs. So that's pretty cool, his own compositions, which a lot of times you don't find any much in the jazz world. Um, and especially with this type of, what I would still call kind of a, a traditional type jazz. Um, you don't find too many people that are that are gonna sit down and, and write new compositions that are really good. And so um, this is really good, I really recommend it. It's called uh, Future Stride, Emmett Cohen. So check it out. Um, I picked up another Bill Evans. This is an OJC release, Original Jazz Classics. Uh, they do a pretty good job with their reissues, and they're usually reasonably priced, like around 20 bucks. So I picked up this because I did not have it, and it doesn't disappoint. This is a, a great sounding record. I also picked up recently the Trio 64 Bill Evans Acoustic Sounds release. Another great uh, recording from Acoustic Sounds. 
You got Bill Evans on piano, Gary Peacock on bass, and Paul Modian on drums. These guys are smoking. Another great, uh, a great choice here uh, for acoustic sounds. Nice glossy cover, and of course you get the the, the quality, uh, quality um, record pressing here with the nice uh, anti-static sleeve. So another great release. Acoustic Sounds is doing some great stuff. So um, anything they put out, you can almost take to the bank. It's going to be a good release. So uh, that's the Bill Evans Trio 64. Now on to a few documentaries I want to show you really quick that are really good. Melonious Monk, Straight No Chaser. If you're into Monk, awesome uh, DVD, great documentary. Pick that up. Bill Evans, Time Remembered. Another great one. I've watched this uh, three times already. Just a great documentary. I really enjoyed this one. And then another one, Anito Day. This is just a great, a lot of people don't know who Anito Day is. She's one of the most prolific uh, jazz vocalists and um, in the history of jazz, modern jazz. I mean, uh, she started back in, I think, the uh, 30s, uh, 40s, and uh, had a career all the way up until she died in the 2000s. So she's been around, was around for a really long time and this covers her life. And so it's really good. It's really well done. Um, and so I really recommend this if you're into jazz vocalists or just a great story. Um, this is really good. Last but not least, I did buy a CD. However, it came with a live DVD with it. And that's why I picked it up. This Ron Carter release, really good. Two discs. One CD, one live DVD, uh, nice quality uh, recording, live recording on the DVD. Um, but um, of course, Ron Carter, probably the most recorded jazz bassist of all time, um, comes with a trifold CD uh, fold out and a little uh, booklet here that talks about um, a little bit about the recording. You've got Russell Malone on guitar. And you've got Mulgrew Miller, the great pianist, um, playing with them. So this is really cool. So the only reason I picked it up, because I was really hesitant on purchasing it. Because again, I'm just, the CD format is just kind of dead to me almost. Um, I'll still listen to them, but um, I, I'm really looking at, with, with digital, I want high quality digital recordings. I want Blu-ray audio. So... Um, I really hope that a lot of these companies, especially in the jazz industry, because classical music is starting to do it a lot now. You're starting to see Deutsch Gramophone and some other ones. They're putting Blu-ray audios out now, along with the CD. And really, the CD is unnecessary. So um, I really think that a lot of these companies that are doing these high-quality, high-fidelity remasters, um, that you just need not, just don't even put out the CD anymore. Go ahead and give us a Blu-ray audio or if you insist on putting the CD in there, spend the extra 50 cents, charge us for the 50 cents and put the CD in there with the Blu-ray or whatever and give us a nice audio file packaging digitally. So that's the last I'm going to harp on that. Uh, so that's all I've got today. I'm also still working on this jazz project um, that we're doing a documentary on. So that's why I haven't done so many uh, videos here lately. Uh, but if you go to the link below, which says Real Jazz Now, you're going to see uh, about four videos up now. I'm going to be putting up a fifth one, and those are just YouTube uh, videos we're, we're, that we're creating for the channel, uh, just to get people, uh, just show people what we're what we're doing, and um, with this real jazz project, documentary project, and we're going to be using different live uh, filming films um, that we're doing. We're, we're recording uh, live uh, from uh, a place called True Story Brewing, which you'll see on the YouTube. Uh, but we're doing some for YouTube that are just going to be on YouTube only. And then we're doing some that are going to go into the documentary with we're recording interviews and all kinds of different cool things here that's going on in Birmingham, Alabama, which a lot of people don't know about, which is the whole reason that I am uh, wanted to do this documentary to really show how uh, these unknown places are keeping the tradition of jazz alive. So there'll be more coming on that. And that's all I've got for you today. Take care and we'll talk to you later on.